Good morning, and welcome to worship with Christ Lutheran Church, our contemporary passage, passage today, or time today, and uh, we're going to invite you to stand for the call to worship, and, and we're going to remain standing through the gospel, uh, so just be prepared, just, just a moment or two longer than usual. The call to worship from 1 Chronicles, the 29th chapter. Then David blessed the Lord in the presence of all the assembly. David said, Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our ancestor Israel, forever and ever. Yours, O Lord, are the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. For all that is in the heavens and on the earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. Riches and honor come from you, and you rule over all. In your hand are power and might, and it is in your hand to make great and to give strength to all. And now, our God, we give thanks to you and praise your glorious name. We must always give thanks to God for you, brothers and sisters, beloved by the Lord, because God chose you as the first fruits for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and through belief in the truth. For this purpose, He called you through our proclamation of the good news so that you may obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, brothers and sisters, stand firm and hold fast to the traditions that you were taught by us, either by word of mouth or by our letter. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and through grace gave us eternal comfort and good hope, comfort your hearts and strengthen them in every good work and word.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 12th chapter. Glory, Glory to, you, to you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which are worth a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. We continue with the children's message. Good morning. Good morning. Do we have young people to come forward? Do you want to come? No, that's okay. That's okay. So, oh, you coming? Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> that's right. Okay, so the gospel reading that Pastor Tim just read was about giving, okay? Did you hear that in there? Maybe, okay. So, I want to help all of us understand a little better the story. So, from our um, story Bible, the story is called The Widow's Offering, okay? And Jesus is with the disciples and asks, do you, do you see that rich man in fancy robes? And so they look around and they see this man in the fancy robes. And he is giving his offering, okay? But he knows they're watching. He wants them to watch, and he's making a big deal about it. So he shows all his coins, so the sun reflects on the coins, and people can see what's happening. And then he puts them in the plate with a loud clang, right? make all the noise in the offering plate. And then Jesus asked the disciples another question. And he says, do you see that poor widow? Now she is trying to hide in the crowd and she is bent over the offering plate and she puts in her two coins and they go clink, clink, ever so quietly, okay? So then Jesus talks about the difference in giving. And so I have two words that I want us to think about today. One is generosity. It's a big word, so I have it written out. Have you heard of generosity? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I looked up the word um, generosity to see what it means. And the first definition said being kind. The act of being generous, because generous is part of that word, right? It said plentiful, and then it said abundance as well, sharing everything, okay? So this is what the widow did. She shared everything, right? Her two coins, she shared everything. And the story goes on to say that quietly the poor woman shuffled away. Did you notice, asked Jesus, the man in the fancy robes gave just a little of his riches and showed off a lot. And the widow gave only two coins she had and kept quiet about it. She shared everything. So that's how we describe generosity and abundance. She is the one who gave the most. And this is the important part here. This is how I want you to share, Jesus said, okay, to be generous. And we're hearing a lot about that in these couple of weeks through November um, with our sermon series. And so I wanted to share that with you too. Generosity and abundance. Okay? Can you uh, fold your hands and say a prayer? Okay. Dear God, thank you for sharing your son with us to teach us how to share all that you provide and giving as Jesus taught us. Amen. Thank you for coming up. <laughs>
Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship, everybody. You're here, and those folks online, it's great to see you. Happy winter. What happened? What happened? Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus, the risen Christ. Amen. Today is week two of our month-long emphasis, stewardship emphasis, under the theme, The Joy of Generosity from Thanksgiving to Thanks Living. I'd like to begin with this story. I'm sure you've heard it. It's an old story. been around the block a few times. One Sunday morning in a little church, the sermon just seemed to go on and on and on and on and on. You've never experienced that here, I know. The preacher kept circling around the point, around the point, you know, that sort of thing. And one of the little boys in the service that day was getting more and more restless and fidgety. Mom was having a hard time keeping him under control. I mean, she would run out of her Cheerios and her Lifesavers and all of that, trying to get him to sit still. Finally, in a whisper loud enough for most of the congregation to hear, he said, Mommy... If we give him the money now, will he let us go? If we give him the money now, will he let us go? That's a good reminder of a couple things. I had a speech teacher in college who said, Tim, as a pastor, you'll want to learn how to shut up while he still want to listen to you. Yeah, that's about the only thing I remember from college, but that, it, well worth it, right? Don't know I've always obeyed that, but. And and the other thing it reminds me of, that little story, is the little phrase, putting in our two cents worth. Putting in our two cents worth. We use that a lot in our lives. And in fact, that phrase comes from this point in the gospel where Jesus uh, observes this woman putting in her two cents worth. But before we get to all that, I'd like to set the context. Actually, the context for this conversation or this observation that Jesus makes along with the disciples is during Holy Week. It's Wednesday of Holy Week, so we're either looking back or we're looking ahead, however you want to look at it. Middle of Holy Week, Wednesday of Holy Week. So on Sunday, what has happened? The Sunday previous to Wednesday of Holy Week, what's happened? Palm Sunday, right. Jesus is coming to Jerusalem on a donkey. Everybody's waving palm branches, lying robes down in the road preparing the way of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Everybody, or most everybody, not everybody, but most everybody is thrilled that Jesus has come to town. Well, Jesus, first thing Monday morning, first thing he gets up, he gets up and he goes to the temple, and what does he do on Monday morning of Holy Week? Anybody remember? He cleanses the temple. This is where he throws out all the money changers, he overturns the temple, he's throwing people out left and right, he's in a rage. That's Monday of Holy Week. Tuesday, Jesus comes back to the temple and he gets into this running debate with the Pharisees and the Sadducees about his authority, which makes sense, right? The Pharisees and Sadducees are are saying to Jesus, who who died and made you God (laughs) that you would do in the temple yesterday what you did? Who gave you the authority to do all that? Who are you to do what you did? And that's when Jesus then talks about give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give to God what belongs to God as it relates to taxes. So that's Tuesday of Holy Week. So here we are Wednesday of Holy Week, the middle of the week, and this is all just all happened. And Jesus is back at the temple and teaching, and and in this moment he steps back and he's observing the, the giving of the people of Israel. Rich, poor, everybody together. Now, the way they worked it, they had the temple receptacles, the the giving receptacles were lined up, 13 of them, in what was called the women's court. So anybody could be there, uh, men, women, children, whatever. Okay, and these receptacles were large, brass, kind of like the old Victrola record players, you know, with like the megaphone thing that would extend the sound. They were like that and they were circular, and so if you threw your coins in there, what did you hear? Deacon Diane pointed out. You're like, you could hear the coins go around the brass receptacle and clunk into the, into the container then. All right, and there were 13 of them lined up so that people, you know, more than people. Well, what happened is, Jesus is watching all this, 
and, and there are some who are very, very rich. And the rich had a tendency to do one of two things. They'd either take their whole bucket of coins and throw it in, and you'd hear this just huge racket, and everybody in the crowd would stop and turn around and see who put in all those coins. And those folks would be sticking their chests out and going, yeah, that would have been me. The second way they did it would be to take their coins and put them in multiple of the receptacles. You know, a, a, a bucket in each one. Shoo, well, that was impressive. Shoo, wow, they're just going shoo, right down the line. And everybody's ooing and aahing over the people who are putting in their giving. It, it's, it's a spectacle. And, and folks are showing off as they're doing this. And then all of a sudden, this poor widow comes and she takes two coins. Ding. Ding. Those two coins added up equal one penny. One penny. And Jesus says to the disciples, Hey, fellas, I want you to see something here. And of course, you know, from a worldly perspective, how would you respond? You know, what's he going to say about this, this woman, this poor, this widow, putting in her, her own two cents worth? Well, the Pharisees and Sadducees, the church would have said, oh, you know, don't worry about her. What she's giving doesn't make any difference. She's irrelevant. You don't need to pay any attention to her. But Jesus turns it upside down, right? He says, you know, everybody's impressed by all this huge amount of money that others are putting in, but she put in, what she put in is more than all of them. Because what she put in was all she had to live on. While the church was saying of the day, that's irrelevant, Jesus was saying, no, this is what we build the kingdom of God on. Because her giving wasn't about money. It wasn't about the amount. It was about her heart and her soul and who she trusted with her entire life. What made her tick. <laughs> that was her two cents worth. How many of you like leftovers? Yeah, Laura's hand shot right up. Yeah, it, it, we're getting close to Thanksgiving, and some of us will live off the turkey for the next week afterwards, right? Um, leftovers, and, and I enjoy leftovers too. But here, here's, when I think of leftovers, for the last 15 years, this is what I've thought of. My mom was born in 1931, so she was a depression child, and she learned from her mom early on to save everything. She just saved everything. She didn't, I mean, we might need that at some point if, you know, and it's like, mom, yeah. She saved everything. Let me give you an example of what I mean. And some of you have heard this in a Bible study or two that I know I've shared it in. But um, when my parents moved from Pataskala to Reynoldsburg 20 years ago or so, my son, Mike, who was then a teenager, helped them move. And his number one job was to clean out the freezer. Mom had a couple of freezers, and, you know, I mean, just because she kept everything, right? And he got to the bottom of the second fr freezer, and he pulls out this, this lump of meat, about four pounds of meat, wrapped in the old white freezer paper, remember that? With a piece of tape holding it shut. And it said on it in cursive handwriting, said on it in cursive handwriting, Roast, fine cut, four pounds, uh, and something else too. So Mike brings it up to my mom, his grandmother, and says, Grandma, what do you want me to do with this? She says, oh, she looked at it, oh, keep this, I can cook it up. I'll cook it up sometime. And Mike says, Grandma, whose handwriting is that on there? That's not your handwriting. She said, oh, that's my mother's handwriting. So my grandmother, my grandmother, died in 1970. So the latest this thing could have been saved and written on by her was 1967. All right? So Mike is holding a four-pound roast that was saved by his great-grandmother 
that's 40 years old at that point. And, and, and he comes home, and he's traumatized. He's traumatized. He says, Mom, Dad, what, what happens if we go to Grandma and Grandpa's for dinner, which we, we did often, and they can, and we have a roast. We're eating roast. How do I know that's not the 40-year-old roast that my great-grandmother saved? And I said, son, your grandma would never do that to us. She'd do it to your grandpa. She'd feed it to him, but she would never feed it to us. What are the chances that you invite somebody over for dinner and you're, what you serve them is leftovers? Even though we love leftovers, would you serve that? Some of you are going, I think we did, didn't we? No. Leftovers. Not a chance, probably. Not a chance. Have you ever noticed, and I hope and pray that you have, that God always gives us God's best? We always get God's best, no matter what. God doesn't cut things in half and say, I'm going to give you a little. We always get God's best. There's a saying that goes, the grass is always greener on the other side. Some of us have tried that out. That's not always true, is it? But this is true. The grass is always greener on God's side. The grass is always greener on God's side every single time. Why is that true? Because God has given you his best. Every day, every moment, God has given you his best. And I am personally continually humbled by the fact that even when I don't give God my best, which is often, God continues to give me his best. He doesn't say, oh, well, you had a lousy week, didn't you? Cutting your grace and forgiveness portion in half this week, God doesn't say that. If anything, he showers me with more forgiveness and more mercy. There's a reason why we confess our sins as a group every single service that we gather together, right? Because we all need that. We all need to hear that. We receive in that confession and absolution God's best. We're bringing to him our less than best, and he's giving us back his best in forgiveness and grace and mercy. Think about that when we do our confession here in a little bit before communion. Remember that. Keep that in the front of your mind. Wherever I am on that spectrum of life and faith, you know, whether I'm a prodigal son or no, no matter what, the Lord is ready, willing, able to forgive me and welcome me back. And you too. All of us. All of us. So you see the story of the widow and her two cents worth isn't really difficult to understand. In that moment, Jesus was showing the disciples and us that the vast majority of those people were giving their leftovers to God. God gave him their, his best, and they responded to God's best by giving him back their leftovers and feeling great about it and proud of themselves by giving back the portion they'd never miss anyway. The woman, in faith and trust, she gave the Lord everything she had. In the end, it wasn't about the money, it wasn't about the amount, it was about her heart. It was about her heart. Brothers and sisters, my prayer is that in our life as followers of Jesus, that we would, we would recognize the wisdom and the work of God's and wonder of God's grace, mercy, forgiveness, and love, God's very best for us. And that we would respond by giving our best, not somebody else's best. It's not a competition, but our very best back to God. And I don't just mean finances. I mean in everything, our time, our talent. You know, our devotion, our worship, our praise, the best stuff, the best stuff. And that God in Christ Jesus would use us, use the best that we have and are to bring that mercy, forgiveness, and grace to the hurting and broken people around us. And there are a lot of them. There are a lot of them. All to the glory of God. The one who was, the one who is, the one who will come again. So let's be about putting our own two cents worth in our time, our talent, our resources, and everything that we are and have. Amen. Will you stand and join us as we sing Of My Hands?
let us pray. Almighty God, preserve your church from empty piety. Stir up our will to always act with mercy and compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, provide all living things with sufficient food and clean water. Make us ever mindful of the farmers and laborers who supply us with our food and open our hands to share what we have received. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate God, awaken our nation to care for veterans and others who have experienced the stress and trauma of war and military conflict. Inspire us to promote the well-being of those who have put themselves in the service of others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, bow down to meet those who are trampled. Greet them with mercy and give new life to those who feel overwhelmed or broken by discrimination, grief, loneliness, or illness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, bless the social justice ministries in our community, including Lutheran Social Services and Lutheran World Relief. Give us a common vision of justice that eliminates hunger, greed, and self-righteousness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we ponder the joy of generosity from thanksgiving to thanks living during this time of stewardship emphasis, help us to grow in grace and generous outreach as we seek to live out the gospel to the best of our abilities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bind us together, Heavenly Father, with the saints of every time and place until we finally join them around your heavenly throne. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. We have several announcements today, all of them extremely important, so bear with me, please. First of all, we invite you back here this afternoon at 2 o'clock for uh, a, a wonderful program called Autumn Songs, and that will be involving four choirs, the Bexley Choral Society, Capital University's Men's Consort, the Whitehall Yearling High School Ensemble, and our own chapel choir, chancel choir. It's a fun program, uh, all four groups participating, and then there's also going to be a time of involving the, the whole congregation uh, in some very special community songs. So join us uh, at 2 o'clock this afternoon for a wonderful musical program. Next Saturday, uh, Saturday morning, uh, 10 o'clock in the gathering space, uh, Deacon Diane will be leading an Advent workshop uh, for families in preparation uh, for the coming of our Lord at Christmas time. Uh, we'll gather Saturday morning for crafts and snacks and, and learn about incorporating Advent de devotions into your faith at home practices during that time of preparation for the coming of our Lord. Uh, sign up using the link available online uh, and available in, in the website or in the uh, announcements in the new sheet uh, available both doors this morning. The joy of generosity from Thanksgiving to Thanksgiving, as, Tam, as Tim has already shared with you, that's our stewardship theme uh, for these four weeks. 
Uh, and, and we've got a, a magnificent Sunday coming next week again. Um, the Chancel Choir will be debuting, believe it or not, a world premiere of an anthem written by Mr. Craig Courtney, a renowned international composer and arranger and former member of the faculty over at Capitol. Um, Craig was commissioned to write this uh, choral arrangement in honor of Al Berry, our choir director and music director here for 40 years. And so not only will we be singing the new composition, but Craig will be here to direct it as well with our own Chad at the keyboard. And it's just gonna be beautiful. A world premiere next Sunday at 11 o'clock during the service here. So uh, you may wanna make it a double header. Come on at, you know, come on at 9.15 for worship, have some coffee, then come back at 11 o'clock and uh, join in that very special celebration. And then that afternoon then, right after the service actually, we'll be having a working luncheon, if you will, on giftedness. It ties in uh, with the stewardship emphasis. Uh, Deacon Diane will be leading this. We'll have pizza and salad for lunch, and then we'll go right into the workshop uh, and uh, discover anew uh, the gifts and talents which every one of us has received from our Lord and uh, discover how we can put them to work here in our mission at Christ Church. So a very busy Sunday next week, a busy weekend, and we hope you can join us for all of that. And now we hear the offertory. Oh, I'm sorry, one, oh, wow. One more very important one, and I would have, I would have been in real trouble if I didn't share this one, Tim. Seriously, uh, from Kathy and Sheila Schroer and from Carrie Lehman, uh, a very big thank you to all the volunteers from the Yuletide Art Show yesterday. Uh, special thanks to Sally Rogers, Frank, and Andy Peters uh, for all of their hard work and, and all of the people who contributed uh, either with projects or donations or they were here to buy from the 30 different vendors. It was a, a lovely day and in spite of snowflakes. Um, the youth programs benefited from the auctions yesterday to the tune of $2,380, which is just a wonderful addition. My infamous book sale, okay, um, resulted in almost $400 for the organ fund, and I'm tickled with that. Uh, there are still books available, and uh, actually we're giving them away free today uh, now, I don't know, the Sunday school class starts right around 1010, doesn't it, Tim? You may not be, because the books are in the gathering, are in the uh, lounge, so you may not be able to get in there before Sunday school starts. Whatever, you may want to hang around for coffee and then take a look at the books. And I would like nothing better than if everybody went home with a whole arm full of books, uh, okay? And uh, they are free. A donation little cookie jar piggy bank is available if you'd like to make a donation towards the organ fund again. But uh, we, you can sort of build up some books for your winter reading, if you will. And uh, now, that concludes, and now to the offertory. My apologies, gang.
Please stand for confession and holy communion. We come before God and each other in a time of confession. Gracious God, so often we look at ourselves, our gifts, and our talents and wonder what you would do with these offerings. We don't think that we have much to give. So far too many times we belittle the gifts and turn our backs on the needs and opportunities present to serve, believing that our gifts cannot possibly make a difference. We think that we must possess the greatest of talents and wealth in order to truly please and serve you. But how foolish we are. Forgive us when we stop listening to your healing and comforting words and focus on our anxieties. Heal us, Lord. Help us know that you have given to us such blessings and that these blessings are truly wonderful and meant to be used in joy and service to others. Help us to bring our lives just as they are to you and to receive your gentle touch and healing grace. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. God has indeed given to each one of us such blessings and talents. And with joy, we bring these gifts to God. We are blessed by God's absolute love for us. And we rejoice in that love and find healing, hope, and forgiveness. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And we pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. As we invite you to come forth for Holy Communion, uh, again, you are welcome to stay at the communion rail, either standing or kneeling as you wish. Uh, if you need gluten-free wafer or grape juice instead of wine, we have the little chalices in, up front and just ask us for one of those. But whether you're receiving the bread and wine here in the sanctuary or at home with what, whatever form you're using there, know that you are receiving the body and blood of Jesus Christ given and shed for you.
please rise for the blessing. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. And now, do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. And may the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. like that. That's a great closing hymn. Thank you, gang. Go in peace, my friends, and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.